Hi everyone. Thanks for joining us for our Be Connected mini series delivered by us here at the Beacon Foundation. So firstly, we wish to acknowledge the traditional custodians of all the lands across the nation that we meet upon today. We wish to pay our deepest respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples and to their elders past, present and emerging. And I also wish to extend that respect to any First Nations peoples joining us today. So today we're joined by Maddie, who is not only the co-captain of the Collingwood Magpies netball team, but is also a Pilates instructor, a teacher and a health and wellbeing ambassador. So today Maddie will be talking to us about goal setting, motivation and drive. So hi Maddie, how are you? Hi everyone, I'm very well. Thank you Hayley. It's a pleasure to be on this. I'm excited to hopefully instill some of my personal experiences and um, tips and tricks maybe I've learnt along the way to some of these wonderful students. Awesome. Glad. Look, we're happy to have you with us. <laughs> so firstly, I want to kick off and talk about goal setting. So how do you go about identifying what your goals are? Um, look, it's it's been a process, I think, for me learning what does and doesn't work. Um, and I have a very, um, I'm very much a black and white personality. So I don't like fluffy gray areas. So I find that the best thing for me in any goal setting has always been to write it down. Organization and planning have always been my forte, but when I'm like trying to figure out what maybe it is I want to achieve and what those girls might look like, I always um, think about the things that I'm really passionate about, things that I love, um, things that bring me joy, things that bring me happiness um, and try and focus some of my goals around those things. Cause I think, um, things that I've done maybe poorly in the past is kind of done that whole throw your eggs all in the one basket and focus solely on one thing. So if it's netball, it's just being all about netball and then all of a sudden something bad or something happens in netball and then I've got nothing else to be, feel positive and happy about. So I think making sure your goals are set across different facets of your life um, has been something really important. But always looking at things that bring you joy and happiness because there's no point saying, yes, I want to do this if when you're doing it, it feels like a chore or you've got no motivation to do it, you want to really, you know, be excited to do these things um, and enjoy the journey, not so much just what the end goal is, enjoy the journey and the process along the way. So when I'm goal setting, I always have those kind of things in mind. And um, yeah, remember what brings me joy, because if I'm enjoying it, then I'm likely going to have more fun doing it. And whether I achieve it or not, it's going to be a really good experience. Absolutely. It's so great to have fun and reach our goals. <laughs> it, it is. Like there's nothing I, I like. And the reason it probably came and hit me was I read the book um, Open, the biography by um, Andre Agassi, and it kind of hit home. I don't know whether anyone else has read it, but it's a really great book because he talks about when he wanted to become number one in the world. And when I become number one, I'm going to be so happy. And then he became number one and it was not all it was cracked up to be and he wasn't really fully fulfilled it was like oh well that was the goal that I had since I was four years old and that's what dad wanted me to do and mum wanted me to do and that was the process that I had to go through but then when he got there he was like I'm actually so unsatisfied with this whole thing like this is not what brings me joy like it's other things along the way that did and that might have been meeting people or certain opponents so I think sometimes we get bogged down in thinking so much about the end goal that we sometimes don't enjoy the process and think, oh, when I get that house or when I get this, I'm going to be so happy when just enjoy what you can and can't, like what you can control in the present. Absolutely. It's, um, yeah, such useful advice, I think. <laughs> so when you've identified these goals, how do you go about tracking your progress to make sure that you're reaching them? So I always write my goals down. Um, I'm very much, and as I said, a planner, I like to have things organized and I think when you're writing it down, you can, I usually put them in timelines. So, you know, you might have short-term goals, you might have medium-term goals and you might have long-term goals and like putting them in a bit of a timeline. So this is the end, but how am I actually going to get there? And I think when you write it down, it's, it's a lot easier to then break it down a little bit smaller. Um, so for me at the moment, I'm still doing an ACL knee rehab. And so obviously the end goal is to play netball, but I couldn't just go from surgery to play netball. So how do you really break that down and go, all right, well, stage stage one or phase one is the first four weeks that's more about just being out of pain and moving and then what the next phase looks like so writing them down is definitely um i think point one 
um, because it also can keep you accountable because it's so easy to say in your head, oh, I want to achieve that. But then I know life happens. And then two days later, you're like, what was it I wanted to do? So um, I think writing it down is definitely point one. Um, point two, I always do is usually share it with someone. It might not be um you know your best friend it might be an auntie or it might be a coach or it might be a mentor or someone that you can trust that is going to kind of keep you on the straight and narrow so when they might and someone who can give you the honest feedback when you need it like parents are great and friends are great but they don't always tell you exactly how you need to hear it sometimes so I think having different people that you can turn to in different situations um, to get the honest truth because you really want to obviously grow personally um, in these when you're when you're trying to achieve your goals as well. You don't want to just kind of sail along. So, yeah, telling someone can always help you um, stay accountable. And for me, I think it just you know is that little bit of encouragement because that's why I play team sport because I love to share those successes, those highs and those lows with other people and be there for other people. But when you're trying to achieve your personal goals, it's sometimes a little bit hard to constantly motivate and encourage yourself to keep going so write them down and to tell someone they're my two two tips i think in um, helping me achieve my goals absolutely great tips nice and sharp and short and sharp it's great <laughs> the, less, the less complicated the easier it is <laughs> that's what i think 100 percent agree <laughs> So as I said, you do all these amazing things. You're not just playing professional netball, but you're a Pilates instructor. You're a wellness ambassador. You're doing all these amazing things. But how do you actually find the motivation to it, not only achieve your goals, but also live this full and fun life? Well, I, I probably do have my support network to be thankful for. Um, so my parents and my sister who are very encouraging and throughout my entire netball journey, but also life journey have always been there for the highs and the lows. Um, so, you know, they always instill confidence and are, are quite encouraging and they're always the realists that go, are you, do you think you're biting off more than you can actually chew Madison? Like, let's just kind of just be happy where we are. Um, that's great, but let's kind of, you know, they're, they're very, they're very um, honest with me, which is really good. But I think, um, you know, to, for everyone, it's really important to understand that you look at your role models or you look at people in, you know, positions that you are aspiring to be in and you think, oh, they've got their whole life sorted and everything's great. Like, I have days and over the last couple of months, it's been really obvious to me that I have days when I cannot be bothered and I am not motivated and that's okay. Like it is totally normal and it's totally okay to feel like that. And I think that's when, you know, you're setting those goals. It's like, okay, well, today I'm not really loving doing this and I can't give all my attention or I'm not really motivated, but hey, I've got this over here that I really enjoy. I'm going to go for a nice long walk. I'm going to read a chapter of a book that I really wanted to, or I'm going to do something for myself to make, draw, draw myself back to what makes me happy. And then I usually find that motivation again, um, rather than sitting and trying to slog at it it would like to me, for me personally, I just don't get anything out of it. So I think it's really important to have, as I said, those different elements in your life that kind of keep you balanced um, and bring you happiness and joy because there's nothing worse than doing something that you can't stand. Um, I started studying a little while ago, again, after doing my teaching degree and I got into it and I was like, I can't, I'm not enjoying this. Like I thought I was ready to do it again, but okay, no, not now put that aside, let's focus on something else. So I think, you know, understand that motivation can come quickly and it can go quickly in the same couple of minutes. So, and it's so normal for every person to feel like that. So I think for me, as I said, it's about sometimes just taking a step back and going, all right, well, I'm not really feeling this today. Let's do something else that brings me joy and happiness and then come back to it when I know that my mind's clear or I'm, I'm ready to have another attack at it. And if I try things and I, I'm, I'm not one to give up straight away. So yes, it's not always going to be fun, but you can continue to push and push and push. Um, whether that's working out, like, you know, you go, Oh, I can't be bothered doing gym today, but Hey, going for a walk is better than nothing. And just chipping away at things small rather than looking at the huge picture. I think the small milestones along the way are very helpful rather than going, oh my goodness, I can't do that 2000 word essay, but I could do 200 words now and I can do another 200 words later. 
and slowly kind of chip away at it. So that helps me get motivated. And also, as I said, when I'm sharing my goals with people, especially exercise wise or, you know, smaller projects, doing it with someone else, because, you know, in a team sport, when I can't be bothered getting up and going to training, I know that 10 other people are relying on me to get there. So sometimes I think with those goals, like with assignments or whatever it is, like doing it with someone helps keep you accountable to it. But also like you feel terrible when you let the, that person down, where sometimes we don't feel that bad letting ourselves down. We're like, oh, well, it doesn't. But, you know, letting someone else down can really kind of pay its toll. So I think sometimes when you involve other people in your goal or in the process at least to achieving it um it can help with the motivation factor and it's, and it's good to be encouraged we all love praise who doesn't like to be told you're doing really really well oh, i love it you can yeah. tell me all day that's fine you're doing really well, Hayley. i love it <laughs> you're doing a fantastic job too maddie <laughs> that's awesome advice so you mentioned that your your knee injury that you've been getting over. So that's obviously an obstacle that you've had to overcome. What do you do when things don't go as planned and you maybe don't reach your goals either uh, at all or when you when you thought you might? Well, I mean, when it's written down, um, one process that we've done a lot in sport um, is like that start, stop, keep method, which some people may be aware of or may not be aware of. So when you're setting goals and you're having that bit of a rut or maybe you've achieved it and it's a small little tick and you celebrate the little small steps along the way, you go, all right, what can I start doing now? What can I stop doing now? And what should I keep doing? So is the keep continuing to write it down in a diary? Is it making notification or like, you know, having an alarm set so that you know that you can definitely get it done in that time? Um, so those types of things. So a start, stop, keep is something that's really good when you're struggling going, you know, why did I start this? Oh, because I want this. Is, it, is that still the reason or that the purpose me actually doing this? this goal or trying to achieve this goal because if the purpose has changed well then maybe you need to reassess the goal so a start stop keep method always works for me um, but I think it's really important whether you achieve the goal or you don't achieve the goal I think a lot of people think oh failure obviously helps you learn more about yourself but I think you still need to learn when you do achieve goals like what did you do really well or what could you have even done better I know you've achieved it but hey could you have been more structured with your time or could you have been more organized or did you put way too much time into that? And you're like, that was not worth all the time and energy I gave. I need to give a little bit more to myself or another area of your life. So um, definitely, I think learnings, um, learn from the good and learn from the bad. It's not just about when negatives happen or that's when your self growth happens. I think you need to learn from wins and good stuff as well. Um, and then also, yeah, stop, start, keep is another little one that we use um, in sporting teams a lot to just keep you tracking along. Um, and as I said, it's all about reflection, constant reflection. You don't want to get to the end and reflect. You want to constantly grow, develop and reflect along the way. Absolutely. I hadn't heard of that, the stop, start, keep. I'll see if I yep. can say it properly. <laughs> yep. Great tips. Great yep. tips. So we have actually come to the last question oh very quickly. I know. <laughs> So for all the students watching today and tuning in, what sort of things could they start doing now to tap into their motivation and drive and start increasing it? Well, I, I've kind of banged on, a, on about it for a little while in this chat. I think um, for me, I know routine and structure is really key, um, especially going even into this COVID um, time when we as a netball team have our training's all structured and now it's like, okay, well, you're in your own space, but this is what you need to do. And I was like, I can't keep track of that unless I've got it written down or I've got a schedule. I operate well on that. Um, so definitely for me, like writing it down or creating a routine, creating a habit, the more you do things repetitively, the more they'll just come naturally. So making sure you set that structure, set that routine, that's a really good thing. Um, I think being, and that comes into being organized and planned, like organizing, yes, when you um, need to have things done or you have things on, but organize also afternoons aside, time aside for yourself to do, as I said, to do those things that you go, oh, I don't have time to do. Like 
Um, I always find, yeah, we're all really busy, but if you really want something and you really want to do it, you will structure the time in to do it. So, you know, factor in afternoons off to go for a walk or to watch your favorite TV show, to read a book, to play a fun game or whatever you need to do. So I think that's really key in like the organizing phase. Don't, don't just structure in the, like the non-negotiables, structuring like my non-negotiables are my me time as well and having time for myself. So that's really, really important. Um, I think another small tip is celebrating the small wins along the way. As I said, you know, we get so caught up on the big picture, but, you know, celebrating the small things, the, the learnings, the growth opportunities going, well, a month ago, I couldn't do that. And now I've done it six times or I've done it once every week. Um, and we always talk about in sport or especially in this time, you know, something is better than nothing. So even 10 minutes at a time is better than zero. So if you did 10 minutes every single day over a week, that's 70 minutes rather than zero rather than thinking of something going, I have to do 70 minutes of it. Oh my goodness, I can't think of that. But small little inc increments and chunks. Um, I think, you know, one of my little favorite quotes is when the coach said to me, like, don't sweat the small things. And I was like, but it's the small things that matter because the small things then turn into big things. So sweating the little small things or celebrating the little small things, I think are the reason why you can continue to grow and push yourself. And we don't really, as individuals, I think, know our full capacity or limitations until you get to a point and then you're like, hang on, I couldn't do this. Now I can, and I know I've still got more. So I think celebrating the little small wins along the way is very important to achieving your goals and um, ultimately having success. So hopefully there's some little pointers that can help. <laughs> Amazing pointers. Amazing. Thank you so much for all that advice. I think there's a lot there that students can take out of this session and go and start implementing at home. I know I can. <laughs> yes. yes. And, you know, like, as I said, like, enjoy, enjoy the process. Don't just worry about the outcome. Enjoy the process because sometimes the journey is better than the destination as we sometimes find out. So um, enjoy all of that. And thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to chat to you, Hayley. Oh, thank you for coming and thank you for giving up your time for us today. And um, that's all we've got time for, <laughs> but it's been fantastic. And thank you to everyone who has tuned in today. And if you want to rewatch any of our sessions, they will be available on our YouTube channel for the duration of term two. And you can also check out our full mini series schedule in the description below this video. And make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss a session. Also, make sure that you check out our other online programs via our website. We have our regularly scheduled industry live events throughout the year. So if you are a high school teacher and you'd like your students to attend, please register your school at our industry live webpage, which you'll also find in the description of the video below. So thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next time.